I think I can add it later. <laughs> All right, so we are live. Well, I think we are. Are we live? Yeah, there we are. Okay, welcome everyone, whoever's here. I see a few people on and I'm very excited. Um, so, oh, James from Australia is on. That's super cool. Um, okay, <laughs> James, I would like to introduce you. Uh, my name is Martha, if you've never been on my channel before, and I am a flight attendant and currently not working. And I would like to introduce a couple friends of mine that I have invited to talk with me today about their business and what they do and how much traveling they have to do with their work. And first of all, I'd like to introduce my friend Brian, who lives here in Ventura as well. And then also my friend Dana, who is a friend from high school. We won't say how long ago that was, but <laughs> it was a minute. Um, but yeah, just a minute. Um, but before I, before I let them introduce themselves and tell you a little bit, I just want to say they are both, uh, they will fly a lot for work. And, um, I want to say that I love business travelers. Business travelers are my favorite. And no offense to all the vacationers, but I have to say that when I get on the plane, the business people, they know what's up. They they get in, sit down, they got their stuff together. And um, as a flight attendant, I just appreciate that so much. They're so prepared. <laughs> so um, anyway, so if you guys would just uh, let us know a little bit about yourself and what you do and why you fly so much for work. Uh, Brian, you wanna start? Wow. Very cool. Yeah. All right. Dana, what's up? <laughs> wow. Wow, that's awesome. Um, I'm gonna pause for a second because we're having some audio issues. Hold on just one second. Right, I mean, thank God. And he's actually watching and he's like, <laughs> runs up here. Here, let me help you. <laughs> Is it through Zoom maybe? No, I think it's just... Oh, yes. Is it because... So I shouldn't use this. No, that's fine. Want them to talk? Yeah. Can you guys talk a little bit? Can you hear them right now? No. I should take this off. Intermittently for um, a handful of internal meetings and, and things here and there, and yeah. we did a couple of virtual happy hours with it. Uh -huh. And I jokingly set up one of the the uh, temporary backgrounds. 
And it was a really nice day when I was working from home in San Diego and was sitting outside getting some sun and realized that I needed to like run in for a meeting, popped it on and there's my virtual background. It looks like I'm at the beach and I realized I'm in a swimsuit top. So I probably ought to put a shirt on at that moment. So <laughs> my favorite almost blunder, yeah. <clears throat> All right, you guys, I think we're, okay. Yeah, sorry about all that uh, technical difficulty there. My headset was causing issues, so, because it's from Walmart. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't use the Walmart headset. Oh, now I can't hear. You can't hear us, Martha? No. Oh, okay, Jared fixed it, okay. Just when you're okay. talking, or when you're not talking, just try to mute yourself on Zoom. So okay, so okay, all right, oh, goodness. Learning. It's <laughs> okay. a curve. So, um, if you guys don't mind, just a quick recap. Um, Brian, I, I could hear you, but the other people couldn't. So, you said you travel probably three. I travel at, yeah, at least at least every other week. Uh, usually, you know, Monday or Tuesday, I'm catching a flight to the East Coast, um, and then I'm back, you know, Thursday or Friday, and that's at least every other week, about three out of five weeks. Okay. And Dana, sorry, you go ahead too. Um, yeah. So I usually travel um, Mondays and Fridays. Sometimes it's a shorter week in there, but I travel usually three weeks out of the month. Um, and on average over the last nine years, I do right around 30 to 35 weeks a year that I travel. Okay. Wow. Very cool. Awesome. Okay. So, um, for both of you, because I know you have very different feelings about all of this. <laughs> you both have a very different viewpoint. And that's kind of why I wanted, like I asked you, and I was super glad that you do. But I was wondering um, if you could tell me the best part of traveling, if you can pick one that you, you know, really feel. And then maybe like the opposite, like what do you not like about it? What do you wish was different about it? Whoever wants to go first. I, I would say one of my favorite parts of traveling is getting to go to places that I, I wouldn't necessarily choose to go to and finding them incredibly charming or um, incredibly interesting. Um, I try to take some time in the evenings when I'm not on site to explore the area that I'm in and find local eateries that, that people recommend. Um, I get a lot of opportunities to reconnect with friends in different areas. Um, as you and I have experienced, we met randomly in an airport one day. Yep, yep. Um, the things I don't like are the summer travel season and the holiday travel season and how much that impacts my ability to travel seamlessly. Mm -hmm. So do you like, so you're, did your company book for you or do you book your own stuff? I book my own. We do have an agent that we can use. Um, I generally know where I need to go and when I need to get there. And I can plan my own dates that I'm going unless it's for training and there's a really specific area that or time frame that they need me. Um, so by the time I find out where I'm going, I already probably have the flight path that I know I'm going to be using. Gotcha. Um, and preferred airlines. I search between two or three of them. If the costs are, are similar, I take the flights that best suit me. And then if there's a real concern to do it, or if I'm doing like when I have to go to Paris to the office for work, sometimes I'll use her then because she has great ways of getting some incredible deals for, for some of that kind of travel. Very cool. Yeah. I was actually telling Brian before we started um, that, you know, randomly you're like, I go through Detroit all the time. And I was like, I'm in Detroit. <laughs> and we hadn't seen each other in years. And so I just like right. ran up there to, to meet up with you. So that was very cool. All right. So, um, Brian, did you have any thoughts as far as like things you like about the actual travel for work and things that you would say, nah, it's not, not cool. So, um, I love to travel and explore new places. Unfortunately for me, for work, I typically go to the same kind of spots again and again. Um, so there's not a lot of new exploration, I would say. Mm. Um, the da the biggest downside for me for travel is I have really bad motion sickness. And so I get sick pretty much every single time. And when you travel as much as I do, that's not really fun. Oh, man. Uh, so I don't love travel for work for that reason. Um, because it, you know, it's very taxing. Yeah. I would say I try to make the most out of it and use the time on the plane 
um, for like really kind of reflection and quiet and almost meditation. I put my headphones on, I get in my little bubble. Um, it's really some of the only downtime that I get, you know, with kids and work and on the community stuff. So, so I, I miss that element of it. Gotcha. And what do you do about the motion sickness? Like, I, how, how do you combat that? You just, I mean, you, sometimes, you know, I try the, the Dramamine stuff, depending on the scenario. Like if I'm taking a morning flight and I've got to go to meetings, that's not really functional because then I'm groggy. So right. you just, you just deal with, I mean, you learn to deal with it. I bet turbulence it's, is super fun for you. Oh yeah. It's, it's funny that you favorite. had mentioned motion sickness. I used to suffer from incredibly terrible motions. Every plane ride, I was heaving my guts out the whole way. And I dated a guy who lived out of state several years ago. And I think it was those short trips helped it for me. But after such a long break of not traveling during the first part of the, the pandemic, I started to notice it again a little bit here and there. So I think I just, I just acclimated eventually, but um, yeah, that it, there's still days that it'll get you. Yeah. I have to say, I do, I agree with you immensely. And I kind of miss about the, my former airline. Um, if, Anybody that's watching, I used to work for a small regional airline, and we went into these little teeny tiny podunk cities that you would never probably even think about going to, but it was so fun. You were so off the beaten path, and I think that's one of the things that I really like about it. We don't do that as much with my new airline. We go to more of the major cities, but um, yeah, I definitely enjoy that a lot. Um so uh, when the when the pandemic kind of like blew up and, you know, everybody started shutting down, was your were your companies like pretty much like, OK, we're everybody staying home and working from home or did they try to like maintain like the to continue what they were doing? So we were deemed non-essential travel at that point. Um, all of our installations stopped. Most of the hospitals that had construction going on suspended that work. A few of them did continue, um, which is resulting in, in our activity now. But um, my job is to come in once the system's installed and train everybody on it. And I was actually on site doing a follow up visit in Phoenix the weekend of the 14th when everything really started going into mm -hmm. lockdown. And by the 18th, we'd restricted travel and we're trying to get everybody back. And by the 24th, we pretty much stopped all travel. Um, I did a couple of trainings remotely at that point to try and kind of figure things out. It was not ideal because it's patient care. And so we needed to be hands on, but so many patients were not being seen that everything started to push back pretty quickly. So we deal with a lot of elective surgeries and, um, most of those stopped those completely. Were canceled, yeah. Right. So we all figured out how to work from home as much as we could. We did start doing a lot of using Microsoft teams in zoom virtual visits where we could follow up with people. Um, like I said, we did a couple of accommodations where FaceTime and team viewers and things like that, where we could get into systems to make changes. We did that as much as possible, but even um, we had a couple of systems that went down during that time period in places that were seeing patients and we couldn't get our service guys out there because travel was just so dramatically impacted everywhere. Right. And as a result, we've really, even our, our home office, they're, all, they're doing a lot more telecommuting um, people are not spending as much time in the office. And I think that's going to be a more permanent change is people respecting the fact that we can often be more efficient from home. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Brian? Yeah. Yeah. We, we I would say we similar. Um, we pretty much shut down all non-essential travel and, and we are deemed an essential um, industry because we provide internet to people. And so who doesn't need internet right now? Um, but from uh, the executives, you know, wasn't it wasn't imperative for us to continue to meet in person and visit sites. Um, so we we pulled the plug pretty quickly on travel and um, and actually relocated, you know, thousands of employees to work at home. And like that. so it was probably two weeks max. I mean, it, we moved very quickly to get folks, um, quote unquote, to safety. You know? Right. So when was your la actual last flight? Like what time? When did you last fly? Oh, I think it might have been the first week of March. Okay. Or it was either last week of February or first week of March. Um, we had, we, I was supposed to fly, I think the week of March 11th or whatever. And, and they canceled that pretty quick. Right. 
Yeah, my last I I finished my last flight on the 18th and everything was so empty. It was crazy. We had nothing to do. We were just sitting there cuz no one either people were just canceling or, you know, not just nobody was booking. So, it was it was pretty pretty sparse already. Yeah. The 14th, the trip that I did that weekend had already been on the books for for some time and we were starting to see things starting, you know, I had I was flying your current airline and I had two flights that day canceled. Oh, yeah. um on my way out of town and then once we got there and I went because the meeting was still scheduled and once I got there the morning of the meeting the hospital said no thank you go home and then I turned around and, and booked as quick as I could to get home at that point there was no point in staying in town right um and that yeah that those were even on those flights we we're starting to see a lot of spacing a lot of distancing even that early and that that would have been I think Maybe the seventeenth, maybe yeah. the fifteenth. Yeah, it was it was right around that time frame. But yeah. So you're back to work, Dana? Then, like fully, like. So during the pandemic, we unfortunately had to do some furloughs, and there were two of us that were left on, or during the peak of the pandemic, at least, there were two of us that were left on at at sixty percent, um, just to kind of handle customer concerns and the places that we're seeing patients, um, any of their immediate needs or questions, mm -hmm. and. Two weeks ago, um, we started seeing sites opening back up for training again. So I've been back um, to full time for just about three weeks now. And what does that look like for you, Brian? Are you? I mean, I know you're <laughs> you're probably digging in your heels, but what? <laughs> I I you know um, I wish I could say that things were slow, <laughs> but uh, if anything, they've only gotten more busy. Yeah. Um, for me during this time. So I'm, I've been accustomed to working from home when I wasn't traveling. Um, so that's just become the de facto, you know, workplace every day. Um, it's, it's been, it's been interesting. Um, I do miss the breakup of, you know, the, uh, uh, I guess a line of demarcation between, uh, work and life mm -hmm. because there, it feels like there's not one at the moment. Yeah. It's just yeah. work all the time. Yes. Um, so that's, that's been tough. You know, it's been a challenge. It's a yeah. blessing to be home, to be with my family, but you know, uh, balance is, I'm striving for balance and yeah. not attaining it. Yeah. That's interesting. That's a good way to, that's a good way to say the, the line of demarcation. Cause it's like, everything looks the same. That's what it feels like. You know, it's sure. just, it's all one big zoom meeting. I feel like. Really? Yeah. <laughs> I, travel looks different though. Now. I mean, like it, it looks different. It feels different. It's, I've been pleasantly surprised. Um, I was going to ask you what, like, what do you think about like how things are being handled? So I was a little concerned about how some airlines were or were not taking social distancing seriously. I had a couple of, of the service guys that I work with who said they were on planes that were 80% full. There wasn't really social distancing. I haven't found that to be the case. Um, I found that the airlines are accommodating when there's a party traveling together or families with children and right. trying to locate them. Um, you know, certainly services on planes are very different. Um, there isn't a drink cart going down the, the, the aisle. They, they do offer bottled waters. Um, some of the airlines, depending on if there's a class level difference, will have like sealed cans of beer available mm -hmm. in certain areas, but only nothing that's an open glass, nothing that's an open container. Um, and one of the airlines that I flew that I'm premier with, they did sealed, um, like meat and cheese or cheese and fruit trays oh. that were individually wrapped, huh. but most of it, mostly it's, there's really not much in there. The airports still don't have food service in any of the ones that I've been in. Right. Um, and so come prepared. Um, and then this week I've started to see some restaurants opening up a bit here. I'm in California this mm -hmm. week. Um, the first week of June, I was in Omaha and it was also right during the peak of the riots that were happening everywhere. Mm. And so I flew in at 10 o'clock and a curfew had been acted, enacted at 3 PM that day. <laughs> so, um, I couldn't rent a car. I couldn't get to the original hotel I was supposed to be at. And I've really found that all of the industry groups in general have been incredibly accommodating for cancellations, changes, and just really 
incredibly flexible. Right. Um, yeah. I and so this that was that out of dining, which makes life a lot nicer. I got very tired of getting takeout and eating in my hotel room. <laughs> um, so being able to get out and at least do like last night, there's a huge courtyard where I'm staying and there was a nice, they had the tables all spaced out really nicely. And um, one of the other people at the, at the hotel and hotels are on very restricted capacity too. Right. Right. Um, I think there's about 200 rooms at the hotel I'm at and they're allowed a maximum of 75 rooms can be booked and no more than two people in a room. Wow. Um, so it, it was incredibly restricted and there's not a lot of people out doing things, but, uh, where I was having dinner last night, there was across the courtyard a ways, there was another, um, solo traveler and she and I had a conversation from about 12 feet apart, Mm -hmm. um, through dinner. And it was, it was just kind of nice to, just to have that interaction. And it's one of the things I enjoy about travel is interacting with different people. Yeah. So Brian, are you going to be flying again soon or is that like still kind of, you know, I think we're. Yeah, I, I think we're trying to figure out what the future looks like. Okay. Um, you know, I think a lot of companies have been maybe pleasantly surprised with um, those that have kind of moved to a more work from home type of environment with productivity levels. And, and you know, now with all of the communication platforms that we've got, it's not too difficult to stay connected. Right. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, I don't need to be on the road anytime soon. Gotcha. Yeah, I have. I, I've heard that a lot. You know, a lot of people are realizing like how much healthier, healthier they are, how much money they're saving. You know, they're less stressed out because they're not on the freeway or running through airports or whatever. Um, so I know there's there's many people that are kind of excited about the fact of not commuting. Um, right. But uh, but like you, Dana, you enjoy it and you. <laughs> You're not, you're not. I mean, I definitely, I definitely enjoy that there are more things I can do that I don't have to be on site for. Mm, Yeah. Yeah. So we do a lot of follow-up visits and a lot of um, meeting time with physicians to train them on our surgical platforms and those kinds of things. And we've found better ways of doing that remotely. Right. So that, that I can be more efficient with my time when I am on site. Gotcha. Uh, and in fact, some of my trips are shorter than, than they were originally planned because I don't need another day or another morning to spend with uh, physicians here and there. Yeah, that's cool. Um, I was thinking when you were talking about the um, like the where, where to eat and all of that, like, have you noticed where where you're where you have been going? Anything like different? Like they just did a whole thing downtown here where they blocked off the whole main street and all the restaurants are moving like their tables outside and stuff just to kind of change things up. Have you noticed anything like that happening in any cities? I haven't seen that in the in the cities I've been in. Um, just I was in Omaha and this week I'm in Palo Alto. Oh, okay. Um, and part of that is that there weren't there weren't necessarily a lot of spaces here in Palo Alto to do that. Yeah. Um, but I know San Diego did that in downtown in uh, little Italy, they, they blocked off streets and everything that is opening up, almost all of it is al fresco dining, which mm. I think is, is a really great way to do things. Um, I did do curbside delivery at one of the places that I ate at this week, just cause I had, had a really long day and didn't feel like trying to hunt down a restaurant and the efficiency with which they're doing those things. So they had spaces marked off, you pulled up. There were people that were attendants that were there. Um, they they verify your note, your phone number. If you paid online, they verify the last four digits of your credit card. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, they would process, and then they bring your food out really quickly. So, if you did call ahead ordering, I found that to be a really useful way to get through yeah. a lot of the process and still not ha- not be relegated to sandwiches and burgers the whole time right (laughs) yeah i feel you there um do you like uh brian i like your thoughts on this do you think that the travel industry will like ever completely be the same like it i mean it was so Uh, easy and every but i mean like flights were packed there was a million flights and now i'm wondering like i mean they're saying 18 months before it even looks remotely normal yeah. I mean, my stance has been that we will never go back to normal, 
right? The the way things were will never be the way things are again. Um, yeah. That we'll continue to find new ways of doing things. Like as a result of this current situation, I mean, there's going to be industries that die or industries that completely change. Yeah. Um, and new industries that are born. I think you know, necessity is the mother of invention, right? Mm -hmm. So I think this time is creating a lot of interesting dynamics for what the world looks like in the future. So is the travel industry ever going to be like it was? Probably not. There'll probably be, you know, new new companies that are popping up that are maybe more, um, you know, like all you can eat type traveling scenarios and you pay a subscription. I know some of those exist, but I think, I think we're going to, I think that, you know, these companies have a lot of money invested, a lot of capital expended. So they're going to come up with creative ways to try to recoup the, those capital investments. Yeah. I was so. talking with a flight attendant friend and uh, cause she's been working the whole time and I just went on a quick trip to visit my family and I was like, Hey, they could leave that middle seat open forever. As far as I'm concerned, that was amazing. Sure. <laughs> and she's like, no, I would not we'll, hate we'll all lose our jobs, you know, like that we have to have those seats filled. And so I don't know. It was like, could we have something that looked like that still? I don't know if that would be possible, but I would love that. <laughs> Me too. As a big yeah. guy, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's nice to not have someone in the middle seat. Right? Yes. <laughs> What uh, can I ask, uh, Dana? What other airlines have you flown? Um, usually, there's three that I bounce between. It's usually Delta, Southwest, and Alaska. Okay. Um, and I, I felt like Delta had the most restrictive flights that I was looking for. Um, getting in and out of Omaha on the first week of June was a challenge because some airlines are not flying every day from certain areas. So the day I needed to come home from Omaha, Alaska wasn't available to me. Mm. They just didn't have flights that day. Okay. And getting in to several cities, um, there's, there's fewer flights available. So where they might have had six or eight flights, a lot of the airlines now are only having two or three at a time. Right. Um, and your flight paths are very different. So you... It, there are either only nonstop flights to certain areas mm -hmm. or everything's going through a hub so that they can pick up a larger plane. Right. Do you, um, so if you, blah, how do I want to say this? Um, so Brian, if you do fly again for work or, and Dana, like when you're flying now, when you go home, like, because we are still in the middle of a pandemic, there is still like, their cases are still rising in a lot of areas. Like, do you do anything special protocol wise? <laughs> like, like, I don't know, like, you know, hose yourself down or like, what do you, <laughs> what do I don't you do, do it as much when I get home. Uh huh. Um, I, I guess when I'm traveling, I'm more aware. I'm not apt to pull things out of my bag as much. I don't spend a bunch of time putting stuff on my tray tables and, and surfaces, even though I'm seeing those get, getting cleaned. Right. Um, but because I'm on site at hospitals and patient care, I do pretty much walk into the room and strip down and change. Oh, gotcha. Um, but really, I've only had two weeks that I've traveled so far. So there hasn't been a significant change mm -hmm. in that routine yet. Um, but I, you know, I, I kind of leave one, one outfit that's my travel outfit for that week. Um, and then I, I generally have always changed when I get home just cause I usually kind of am ready to clean up, just wash off the travel in general. Right. But not really that different from how it was before for me. Yeah. More, more hand sanitizers and wipes with me, for sure, <laughs> traveling. But uh, that's, that was one of the other big changes I saw is airlines are now letting you carry designated containers of hand sanitizer with you up to 10 ounces. Yeah. And I thought that was, that was really great. But for a while, I've been a fan of my own water bottles and things like that anyway when I was traveling. Yeah. So I have um, like a hydro flask that I use. Yeah. So... That, that was already kind of in place for me. I've just probably reinforced it more. Yeah. I, I don't, I'm not sure that my, um, 
rituals would change at all. You know, as, as I mentioned, I get motion sickness. And so that usually involves cold sweats when I'm taking off and landing. So by the time I get home, all I want to do is take a shower and, you know, <laughs> So, so, so I, I'm sure that will continue to be the case. Now. You're already <laughs> hosing off anyway. So. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, so I guess uh, only other thing I was thinking I wanted to ask you is um, if you have, just for funsies, any fun stories or weird thing or just maybe like a cool thing that happened on one of your trips, if you can remember it. <laughs> I'll start. <laughs> <laughs> give me time to think. <laughs> um, so uh, my, I don't really have, it's funny because when I started this job, everyone was like, oh, I want to hear all the weird stories of all the weird people. And honestly, those are really rare. Um, they just are the ones that get videotaped and put on um, Facebook and stuff. But um, I went very early on in my career when I think there was only either one or two flight attendants. I don't remember which airplane I was on, but most of the time I was the only flight attendant and um, everyone was boarding and this guy came on and he was kind of wobbling around and I was like, is he okay? Like, or, you know, and I didn't want to ask because I thought like maybe he was like special needs or something. Like I thought maybe he just had a hard time walking. And so he walked all the way to the back of the plane, which is not where his seat was. And then he started like, you know, swimming upstream to get back to his seat, which was in the second row. And um, so he <laughs> he sat down and a lady came on and she was like, she's like, I'm not sitting next to him. And I was like, oh, wait, what? You know, and I was like, and those planes are small. Uh, Danny, you've probably flown on those little Delta connections yeah. and the American Eagles and stuff. Have you flown on those, Brian? The little itty bitties? Oh, I have. With the four oh, yeah. seats? <laughs> Uh -huh. so there's not a lot of room and if something's going on everybody knows about it and uh right. so i was like okay um can i could you, could you come tell me why like i need to know what's going on and she's like she's like he sat at the bar for like two straight hours like just one drink after another and she's like he is just he's belligerent he's just and so i was like okay um i think we have some open seats so i was gonna move her and, I mean, move him. And then he pulls out his phone and turns on this music. And it's like, I don't know what it was, but it was very, a lot of foul language, just blasting, no headphones. And he's just sitting there, you know, just listening. I was like, okay, this is not going to go well. And so I went up to the captain and I was like, hey, uh, I think this guy's probably had a little too much. I don't think it's probably safe for him to fly. And he is like, really? You know, he was not like thrilled, you know, because if they have to kick, it's just a big rigmarole. And so the the supervisor came on and he's like, well, what makes you think he's been drinking too much? And I'm like, well, <laughs> let me just lay it out for you. So anyway, I think the funniest part of it was that it was, I was so brand new and I was like, I really have to kick someone off the plane. And the funny thing is when the guy came and asked him, he's like, hey, sir, um, did you have a few drinks in the bar? He goes, yeah. He's like, I just was, you know, just enjoying my last couple of hours here. He's like, well, thank you for being honest. We're going to go ahead and put you on a different flight. <laughs> so anyway, it was just I, just one of those things that a newbie doesn't want to have to do, you know, and I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> no one wants to kick anyone off a flight. But anyway, that's my story. So did you guys think of anything? No pressure. I have dozens of really great travel stories, particularly <laughs> when I was new, that are insane um but as related to to actually travel the ones that i always think are great is when you travel often enough that a flight crew starts to recognize you <laughs> and um a couple of years ago i was flying with delta so often there was a flight crew that's based in detroit and i saw the same flight attendant several times to the point that, uh, and I, at that point was, was platinum. So I was often being thrown in first class and she was often the first class um, flight attendant to the point that she recognized me and remembered my drink. <laughs> Not nice. only did it happen on a domestic flight, but when I was coming back on a flight and I had booked late and I wasn't even, I was like towards the back of the plane and she looked at me, she says, oh, are you sitting with us today? And I said, no, I'm sitting back here. She walked back and brought me a drink <laughs> back there. I was like, I'm not sure that's really a good sign or not. And then it had been several months and I hadn't flown and seen her. And I was coming back from France 
and my U.S. leg from Atlanta to San Diego, I was flying with my husband and my parents, and she recognized me again. That's and the really same thing unusual. Brought drinks back. I mean, she was she was amazing. That's, so like we're we're literally on a first name basis with with each other. That's but, really un, that's really unusual because I know with Southwest, like I mean, we there's flight attendants they fly the same thing all the time. Like I had a picture right. with a flight attendant, and somebody goes, "Oh, I think I've flown with that lady before." <laughs> so like people know them, but so that's unusual right. that you and those all those different routes that you got the same person. That's hilarious. so she and she does like a. a San Diego, Seattle, Detroit, and Atlanta is are are her her legs generally, yeah. and it just happened that I was on several of her legs over the course of a couple of months. So it was it was really interesting that it happened that way. It happened one other time in the course of a month. I flew back and forth to Honolulu twice, and um, they were it was actually just about six weeks apart. And the lead flight attendant and I had been joking on the first flight, and she recognized me on the second flight as well. <laughs> so it's just when you can make a connection like that yeah. with particularly like a flight attendant who sees literally thousands of yeah. people in a week. Yeah. So I, I think those are my favorite, probably not always the most entertaining stories. I've got more entertaining ones, but that's enough. <laughs> <call. laughs> what about you, Brian, in your, in your sweaty uh, <laughs> seasickness? <Yeah. laughs> um, well, I guess I would say there, um, I usually f- fly the same routes and tend to be on the similar schedule. And so I often will see the same flight, at, you know, flight attendants and, and they'll recognize me. Yeah. Um, and given my um, wardrobe consists of a lot of Vans stuff okay. just because I'm tall. And so, you know, the Vans shirts are long enough. And so I just have a lot of Vans stuff. And when I travel, um, I usually try to be as comfortable as possible. And so I'm in t-shirts and shorts and whatever. Well, at one point, I guess I had worn enough vans and, and you know, clothing that the the um, flight attendant, when I wa- when I boarded the plane one time, she's like, so, like, do you work for vans or, like, what's the deal? Like, you run their marketing department? And uh, so that was, that was funny. I guess at that point, I realized, like, oh, I probably should expand my wardrobe a little. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've, the fact that she knew that my attire, you know, like <laughs> over a period of time. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, yeah, I've definitely seen people uh, repeat, repeat people. The, the craziest thing is I've seen like kids that I used to teach like years ago. I mean, I haven't taught for like probably 20 years and <laughs> they're adults and they're like, Mrs. Bangs. I'm like, who are you? <laughs> but well, guys, uh, anything else you would like to add? What would you say? Safe to fly now? Or would you, if you could, you would not do it? I think it's safe to fly. I like the precautions. And like we said, I wouldn't mind the middle seats being um, blocked. Most of the experience I've had, they're really enforcing wearing masks on the flight. Um, yep. If you have somebody who's not able or not comfortable to do that, um, I haven't seen anybody who wasn't complying on some level. The airports are handing them out when you get there if you don't right. have one. Yep. Um, it, I, I think it's fine, but I think you need to come prepared. Yeah. Um, if you're traveling with children, it might be a completely different situation for sure. But, um, you know, definitely don't count on the places that you're going to be the ones that are protecting you, even if they say they are. Yeah. Um, have wipes, have hand sanitizers, have extra masks in case yours breaks randomly. I see people running around and then they're mad. They have to buy a new one because they're using one of the disposable ones that yeah. aren't meant to be worn for days and days and days. And then they're mad when it breaks. <laughs> right. Um, and and just pack your patience more than ever. You know, yeah. I think yeah. that's something that you need, you need to be very forgiving for the flight attendants. And, I, you know, I think you guys do an incredible job. Um it can't be easy to deal with, with the people that you're dealing with. And I feel like they're going out of their way more than ever to make us feel safe and to want to be there. And you feel very welcome when you're there. Yeah. Cool. What do you think, Brian? But I would still like to limit (laughs) to a good degree. (laughs) I don't want to be crammed in. (laughs) Um, I I have, I haven't had to travel. I, I, you know, I think as long I agree with Dana, I mean, I think as long as you take your precautions, I, I wouldn't be concerned about having to travel. 
Yeah. Um, I think it was good advice, you know, to, to come prepared. And it hadn't even occurred to me that I wouldn't be able to get food or water, you know, inside the, the airport. So, or even into on the, on a flight. So yeah. that's, that's key. Hudson news is open, but that's about it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, um, there was quite a few places when I went to Vegas, there was quite a few places open, but not, not a lot. Like, I mean, it was very limited. All the machines were pretty much empty, you know, like the vending machines right. and whatnot. Um, Phoenix was very interesting because they had everybody packed into one terminal and one terminal completely shut down and then hardly any food options on the one. So it was like, you've got... I mean, a gajillion people were crammed over there and then nothing for them to eat or do, you know, and it, it was, it was a little crazy. I was not, I wasn't super impressed with the, what yeah, they were doing. Phoenix, my choices were chips, 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 or a lunch bowl. Yeah. And I was like starving and you're like, what are you going to do at that point? Right. Yeah. Um, and, and like even their selection of like trail mixes and things like that was almost non-existent at that point. Yeah. I think I ended up getting but, a cocktail. <laughs> it's like, I can't go wrong with the cocktail. <laughs> I could have been five places for cocktails, but every Starbucks I've seen in an airport is open. Yes, which true, I, true. You would think that the bars would be the one place that's open. I mean, at least the right? alcohol kills the germs. <laughs> exactly. I mean, I mean, if there's any benefits, we can carry our liquor around with us now. Right. right. <laughs> it's totally an excuse. Sanitizer. <laughs> All right, you guys. I'm uh, looking at my list. I can't think of anything else. Did I forget anything? Anything else you want to add? I super appreciate you guys doing this. Um, it was very fun. And thanks for dealing with my <laughs> technical difficulties us. at the beginning. I'm still learning and I'm not giving up. <laughs> That's the spirit, Martha. Keep at it. <laughs> All right, you guys. We'll have a All wonderful right. rest of your evening. And I hope to see you again soon. All right. Thank you. All right. You Take care. care. Bye.